Okay, hi, and welcome everybody. We are live. Welcome to the channel. And what we'll be doing here today is covering my experience with using light therapy for an entire year. So I used light therapy for about a year and I just wanna go through my experience. Uh, I tried it for actually over one year now, but I'll talk about my experience throughout this year that we've been doing it. And some of the benefits that we're gonna be going through is enhanced cognitive functioning. So research suggests that exposure to 40 Hertz light therapy actually stimulates brain activity leading to improved cognitive functions like attention, memory, problem solving skills, also used for Alzheimer's disease uh, treatment and prevention as well. There's studies that show that 40 Hertz light and sound therapy can reduce beta amyloid plaques and NFTs, which are neurofibrillary tangles in the brain. They can also reduce tau protein buildup in the brain, which are often associated with cognitive decline or Alzheimer's disease, potentially showing a treatment for disease progression, treatment and also uh, prevention and also improved quality of sleep. Now, the first study that we're gonna go through is how 40 hertz light flickering promotes sleep through cortical adenosine signaling. This was published just this year in February 8. So we see here the abstract flickering light stimulation has emerged as a promising non-invasive neuromodulation strategy to alleviate psychiatric disorders. And this is one of the things that I experienced as well, as little as 40 lux. So it showed that uh, cortical neurons rather than astrocytes as the cellular source, the intracellular adenosine generation from AMPK associated energy metabolism pathways. So this is something that we've experienced personally that when we started using 40 Hertz light therapy via this device right here. So you can see here that it's small, it's portable and it has different uh, light levels, right? You can have it a low setting, high setting, whatever you're comfortable with. We noticed that when I started using it, I would sleep throughout and I would actually enter deep sleep. And what's good about deep sleep is that once you enter into that deep sleep, like REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, that's when the brain starts healing itself. That's when the body starts healing itself as well. And that's why sleep is so important. And we see here that this type of therapy actually promotes sleep and it does it through this uh, adenosine, right? We know that, for example, when you drink coffee, what happens is that that caffeine in the coffee uh, suppresses adenosine. And when that adenosine hormone is suppressed, then you don't feel sleepy anymore. And so that's one of the issues with uh, people, for example, who have trouble sleeping. You know that uh, if you're going through insomnia, then what's happening is that that adenosine isn't being suppressed. And so we found this out um, through these studies, through animal studies, and we've experienced it as well through our own experiences. Even um, someone who was using this for the purpose of a disease of moya moya, she would uh, started using it and she noticed that she's able to nap more. She's, a, she's able to sleep better. And we know that sleep is really essential for neuro repair. And so it says here, it is paramount to delineate the neurochemical mechanisms underlying 40 Hertz light flickering to fully exploit the therapeutic benefits. So it looks like what's happening here is that um, it's helping with oxygen consumption, right? Uh, our brain does need oxygen. And what's happening is that it's able to actually give the brain that rest that it needs. Um, it says right here, extracellular adenosine with its intrinsic link with energy metabolism can stimulate active you later of neurotransmission and synaptic plasticity. And this is uh, what a lot of studies has found as well, is that when you're engaging in the 40 Hertz therapy, what's happening is that it's actually increasing the neuroplasticity in your brain. Now, what is the point of synaptic plasticity? What's the point of neuroplasticity in the brain? Well, the more neuroplasticity you have in the brain, the, the better you're able to retain memory, the better able you're, you're, you're better able to study. So we know that the increase in neuroplasticity helps with memory and that decrease in neuroplasticity actually um, reduces your ability to remember. Now, this is associated both with short-term uh, memory and as well as long-term memory. Uh, it says in the study as well, among its multiple psychological effects, adenosine is well known, is a well-known physiological regulator of homostatic sleep requirements. And that's why when people, you have too much coffee, you're not able to sleep because that adenosine is being suppressed. Now, the more 
uh, 40 hertz you're exposed to, what's happening is it's triggering the gamma brainwave uh, in your brain. And as that's being triggered, uh, adenosine also um, is a, your, your, your brain is still able to access it, right? It says right here, conversely, caffeine, the most widely consumed psychostimulant and non-selective adenosine receptor antagonist produces a strong arousal effect. Now, what we don't want is so much uh, adenosine suppression that uh, you're, you're awake when you should be sleeping, right? So that's very important. And so that is one of the benefits that I have experienced personally from the 40 hertz light therapy is that as I use 40 hertz light therapy, I notice that my sleep is not only deeper, but I'm able to fall asleep more easily. It says right here that the uh, the adenosine hypothesis of 40 hertz flickering may not only provide a neurochemical explanation for some observations that 40 hertz flickering produces drowsiness, drowsiness in AD patients and improves beta amyloid induced sleep disturbances and rhythm disorders, but also offers a novel and non-invasive therapy for chronic insomnia. So if you're dealing with insomnia, uh, which affects here 20% of the world's population and actually uh, up to 76% of these people with comorbiditis. Um, I, I'm not even sure what uh, this means. So what we're going to do, we're going to just search this quickly is a medical term, right? Let me see here. What's here? Yeah. Medical term that describes the existence of more than one disease or condition with your body at the same time. So you could be going through insomnia and other things as well. Okay. Let's go into um, right over here. So we see that, uh, I'm not sure my window is following here. Let me see. Now we're going to go to another study. And this one uh, talks about sleep as well, but specifically for uh, Alzheimer's patients. So let's go here. Ah, okay. Let's go to this. This is a frontier study here. All right. So this frontier study, we see here that sensory evoked 40 hertz gamma oscillations improve sleep and daily activities in Alzheimer's disease patients. Let's zoom in a little bit here so we can clearly see it. Pathological proteins con contributing to Alzheimer's disease are known to disrupt normal neural functions in the brain, leading to unbalanced neural excitatory inhibitory tone, distorted neuronal synchrony, synchrony and network oscillations. However, it has been proposed that the abnormalities in neural activity directly contribute to the pathogenesis of the disease. And in fact, it has been demonstrated that induction of synchronized 40 hertz gamma oscillations of neural networks by sensory stimulation reverses AD related pathological markers in transgenic mice carrying AD related human pathological genes. So what happened here is they conducted various tests in MIT and in other universities now where they took the light therapy and they had uh, mice that had this Alzheimer's disease gene. So they had the pathological pathological gene with these Alzheimer's patients. And we saw that the mice that received the 40 hertz treatment were actually able to continue functioning while the control group that didn't receive this uh, degraded. So their brains degraded. They weren't able to go get their food. They weren't able to go through the maze. And we saw neuro degeneration with those mice with the Alzheimer's disease that um, were not exposed to the light therapy. So we see that the light therapy also has a preventative uh, ability. Now, if you, for example, uh, have a dementia in your family, if your um, relatives have experienced it, then chances are that uh, you will experience it as well. In fact, one in three people will experience dementia in their lifetime. And so this is a great preventative measure as well. And um, that's 100% one of the things that we noticed was that uh, our sleep improved. And, you know, this is a, a great uh, therapy, especially non-invasive. There's no cure for Alzheimer's disease, disease, but there are preventative measures. And this is definitely one of those that we're seeing here. And it works again by reducing these beta amyloid plaques and specific tau proteins that clog up the brain. And then now your brain isn't able to function. So it slows the progression of the disease uh, as we've seen, and it has a, an ability to even stop it in its tracks. So um, that makes sense that it would have an effect on your cognitive function as well. One of the things I noticed that uh, memory has been improving. Now we know uh, there's been uh, some people even using this specific device that had a brain trauma injury. And what happened over time was that uh, their uh, long-term and their short-term memory improved with the daily use of this light therapy. Now what's important here is also daily use of the light therapy, because if you stop using the light therapy, what happens is that um, 
that specific disorder or that uh, neurodegeneration actually continues. And I guess that's, you could say, is one of the drawbacks uh, with this device is that you have to actually use it daily. It's not something that you just take and then you just stop. It's There, there needs to be continuous use of this uh, that will help the brain. And, and, and the reason why is because the, the brain also is is not something that you can you can just fix and then it's done right you you want to continue using the treatment and what's great about it is that you can just use it passively right you just you just put it somewhere you put it on your office uh, you put it in your car you put it uh, in in a place where you're using it and it just it just works passively and you don't have to you know um we know that binaural beats at 40 hertz also uh helps a lot of people and i have a study on that as well but the benefit of this one is that you don't always have to have on headphones right so let's go to a study now uh, where we're using uh binaural beats at specifically 40 hertz uh where is it here ah uh, here here it is okay so let's look it up here and i'll share that as well okay so here we have the the brain response to 40 hertz binaural beats and the effects on emotion and memory. Okay, here's the abstract. Gamma oscillation, let's zoom in here. Gamma oscillation plays a role in binding process or sensory integration, a process by which several brain areas besides primary cortex are activated for higher perception of the received stimulus. So we know that uh, 40 hertz increases gamma oscillations, gamma brain waves, and um, these gamma brain waves what happens is it's associated with executive functioning. And one of those executive functionings is emotional regulation. Now you'll find that one of the things I noticed was that emotional regulation did improve. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean you're gonna have perfect emotional regulation. You're gonna be able to always control your regulation. But one of the things that we did find with my son using this is that we noticed that his tantrums actually went down severely. Now, before that, uh, his tantrums were, were quite, um, how do you say this? They were quite prevalent and they happened often. But what happened is as he used this, and my son has been using this also now for over a year, as he used this, his emotional regulation improved. We noticed that his tantrums uh, went down. So there were less tantrums. And also what was happening was that he was able to regulate those emotions that normally would you know, freak him out. He'd have a tantrum, he'd get angry, he'd get frustrated, he'd get extremely sad about something. And his ability to emotionally regulate and come back to equilibrium uh, took a lot longer. Uh, with the advent of this, uh, using this, we noticed that he was able to get back to regulation, get back to control a lot quicker. And we noticed that with uh, ourselves as well. So again, it's not going to be perfect, but the more you use it, it seems that somehow it's also aligned with uh, what we've been finding with binaural beats and the effects on emotion. So emotional regulation is big, right? Because we know that when you're emotional, you're going to do things that um, might not be uh, very wise. You're going to do things or say things that um, might be induced by that emotion. And we know that uh, sometimes those aren't always great. So um, they did a uh, questionnaire here, uh, the Brunel Mood Scale, a, a questionnaire to evaluate emotional states revealed changes in emotional states after listening to the stimulus. Now, what's good about this and its relation to the light therapy is that basically 40 hertz binaural beats has the exact same effect on the brain, only with the light therapy, it's working through the visual cortex, through the optic nerve to stimulate that gamma brainwave, specifically at 40 hertz. Now, what's different with the 40 hertz binaural beats is that it's actually working through uh, your ears, right? It's it's working through uh, an, an auditory mechanism. And uh, what's good is that you don't have to walk around with headphones, right, all the time because binaural beats uh, stereo, you need left and you need right to be able to stimulate um, that 40 hertz happening in your brain. And so what's quite remar remarkable here is that our bodies can pick up on these various different senses that affect the brain. We know now that uh, light therapy has effect on the brain. We know that even um, through uh, the nose, through through smell, that can affect the brain. And that's why when you smell something nice, you you can feel nice. When when you smell something absolutely terrible, you you feel absolutely terrible. And we know also that light has an effect on the brain. And so this has happened. Um, it's been uh, for us uh, and my family, my kids, my wife and I, we've been using this for uh, a while now. Uh, I would say when we started using this, I would say probably two years now. It's been two years. No, I would say about a year and a half. So we've been using this for about a year and a half and we've noticed improvements in memory. We've noticed improvements in 
um, cognitive function. Uh, we've noticed, noticed improvements in emotional um, regulation. And, um, you know, it, it makes sense because this has been used now for Alzheimer's. Now, the device that we're using specifically is uh, Gamma Cure's device. It is Edible Lights device. Uh, you can go to edibelelights.com. You can go to gammacure.com. And what's important, again, is that there's constant use of this, right? Because you don't want to just use it and then uh, it's done. Um, you actually have to actively use it, kind of like any muscle, right? Uh, if you want the improvements of exercise, you got to keep using it. And if you want the improvements of eating well, you, you got to keep uh, eating well. And once you stop eating well, you know that the, the pounds are going to come back on. And we, we, we know that uh, when you stop exercising, the muscle's going to uh, gonna atrophy. And so this is the same thing, except this is the helping the muscle in your brain and specifically the frontal cortex, right? Um, as the gamma brain waves is uh, the highest frequency of brain waves, it affects all of the brain and it doesn't just affect one portion of the brain. And I think this is why also that uh, your brain is able to function at a higher level when you start using this type of therapy. And it's been found here. We know that it works with binaural beats as well, uh, binaural beats stimulus. And we know now uh, through science that light stimulus as well is extremely beneficial for the brain. So there you guys have it. That's my personal experience from uh, one year of doing this type of therapy. Uh, we've been doing it for our whole family. Uh, my, my children have been using it, my, my wife, um, and we've seen incredible improvements in our lives. So if you're someone who suffers from uh, sleep, you know, you know, sleep disorders, uh, insomnia, this could very well help you. Uh, if you're someone who suffers from memory, um, you know, executive functionings associated with 40 Hertz oscillations in the brain as well, uh, could be a speech. We know that uh, I'm someone who uh, on a regular basis, I am uh, in front of people, I am uh, preaching. And when um, I've been using this, I noticed that I've been able to retain my notes a lot better. I've been able to remember um, the things that I'm going to say a lot better. And so, yeah, if this is something that'll help you, remember to check it out. Uh, you can go to ediblelights.com. You can go to gammacure.com. And I hope that it has helped you. Well, this is um, everything uh, brain boosting here with Vince Revo. And if you guys have any questions, please let us know in the comments down below. And um, okay, I see here a comment here. Okay, there's a, another research here. So yeah, we'll definitely check that out. Thank you, Lawrence, for sharing that with us. But there, there, there's a lot of evidence now that light therapy does work. Um, in, in my experience specifically, uh, what I'm referring to, uh, the benefits that we've seen are this. We've seen a lot more, but it's it's hard to kind of cover that in, in one in one live stream, but one of the, definitely uh, the three that we've experienced is uh, better emotional regulation, enhanced cognitive functioning, uh, better memory and improved sleep quality. All right, well, that's it for now. Thank you for your time and make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow for more. We'll be doing these uh, regularly now. Uh, as I'm also doing my own research and we'll be releasing a book as well on 40 Hertz uh, therapy. Uh, so watch out for that. We'll give an announcement to when that's about to launch and uh, we'll be working closely with Edible Lights and Gamma Cure as well. With that said, I hope and uh, wish you a blessed day um, and we hope and pray that uh, your brain also is in a state um, that you know is able for us to continue to live our lives, care for our families and uh, live out our purpose. With that said, blessings to all of you guys, and we will see you in the next program. Bye for now.